Sonance has a huge history in architectural speakers. For a long time, that's been the bread and butter of what we do. So we've got this product line called Visual Experience Series. There's many, many speakers of different sizes and performance levels that make up Visual Experience Series. And that's kind of the entry level into getting audio integrated into a home in a way that's really visually appealing. But then from there, where do you go? And that next step up in performance and in the aesthetic is Small Aperture. So with the Sonance SA-466, what you're doing is you're going from this architectural speaker that a lot of times can have a fairly large size grill, and of course that grill size is shrinking down almost impossibly small. It's a four inch grill. We have so many finish options that we can take that small grill and make it blend right in. And I think the real compelling reason for small aperture is you really want a speaker that matches the different shapes and sizes of other things in the ceiling, and that's usually lighting. So when we embarked on this project to build a Sonant small aperture and what that could mean, it meant that we really deconstructed small aperture and every element of the technology. How can we make a small aperture speaker that's a little bit more affordable? And in doing so, we developed some new ideas and technologies of all the internals that go inside the speaker, and that influenced what we did with James. We realized, wow, we can take some of these ideas and we can multiply them by 10 and let's put them into a James product and have this absolutely killer flagship experience that just ups the performance bar that much more. This is a bandpass subwoofer in a bandpass box. And so as air is kind of moving in and out of that port, we really want nice, clean, extended bass response. So it was all about how can we reduce the turbulence inside that port? How can we dampen any resonances that might exist in that port? The module of a small aperture speaker is the other element here that we wanted to really improve and kind of deconstruct and then reconstruct. And so the bigger that we make that module, the more that we're sort of blocking the port and preventing the bass from coming out. Getting that module size down as small as we possibly can is one of the most important things. And that presents its own challenge, right? Because the smaller you make a speaker, the harder it is to make it full range. Something changed over the last few years. And what we've started doing is collecting more data on our transducer and speaker designs than we ever have before. We've acquired and invested in a lot of new equipment and laboratory spaces that allows us to gather more data on our drivers and speaker systems than we ever had. Using that data to then perform simulations, we discovered this material called thin ply carbon. And it is this really impossibly thin laminated carbon material. What makes it really special and actually fun to work with as an engineer is that we layer it in tons of layers. And what that allows us to do is selectively choose where to add strength to a cone or a dome. So we've put this thin ply carbon into the new James SA68, and that is what really unlocks that exceptional fidelity and performance that you get from this speaker that has an impossibly small three inch opening. So now that we have a Sonance SA product, and we've got this amazingly upgraded James SA product, we can really cover a lot of bases. The small aperture as a speaker can fit pretty much anywhere, whether it's a tongue and groove wood ceiling, whether it's a drywall ceiling, and there's other types of exotic ceiling surfaces that we've dealt with in the past, we can really put it anywhere and make it work with anything. At the end of the day, we're trying to take a technology that is fantastic for audio performance and fantastic for aesthetic and get it into the hands of as many people as possible.